Amen. I think guys have a hard time saying I love you, but I love these men. I love you, each and every one of you today. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word today, please. Thank the Lord for the word of prophecy that we heard earlier that was one of the gifts of the Spirit in operation, and we want everything that God has for us, folks. In a minute, we're going to be turning to 1 Chronicles chapter 14. But right now, we're going to say our word declaration. You're going to take your copy of God's word, you're going to raise it high in the air along with me, and you're going to declare this like you mean it. Are you ready? Here we go. This is God's infallible word. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation. I will delight myself in it. God's word has the power to change lives. May my life be changed today. Amen. Open up your Bible to 1 Chronicles 14. Let me, can I preface this message today by saying this? Today we're talking about breakthrough. But the only way you can know that you need a breakthrough, or the only way that God will give you the promise of a breakthrough, is your intimacy with Jesus. You must spend time with Jesus. I must spend time with Jesus. Today we're going to be talking about David and a mighty breakthrough he got in his life. But he got it because he spent day after day on the hillside watching his daddy's sheep, playing his stringed instrument, singing to the Lord in the presence of God. Now, I know none of you are shepherds today, except Rick and Leah. (laughs) But we all have time that we need to spend in the presence of God. Amen? So, I want this message to be relevant to all of us today, but in all honesty, if you really haven't been spending time with Jesus, you may need to catch up at a later point, because, or right now. You can't think of a better time to catch up than right now. Because... Your breakthrough, your promises from God come about as a result of the time that you spend in the presence of God. First Chronicles chapter 14, beginning at verse 8, we'll read to the end of the chapter. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go, and I will deliver them into your hands. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So that place was called Baal Perazim. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and God gave orders to burn them in the fire. Once more the Philistines raided the valley. So David inquired of God again, and God answered him, Do not go directly after them, but circle around them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all nations to fear him. Hallelujah. Father, we already prayed your blessing upon this time, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated today. Your breakthrough comes out of your intimacy with God. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the third in a four-part series. The first Sunday, two weeks ago, we talked about, see, I'm going to quiz you today. We talked about break down. That's talking about the humility of spirit we need to have. We need to deal with any pride issues we have in our heart. And as we do that, God makes real to us those areas of our life where we need a breakthrough. Part of that humility of spirit is just going to God and saying, God, I need a breakthrough. That's, that's humility. That's saying, God, I can't do it. God, I need you to do it. I, I need a breakthrough from God. So here's what I want us to do right now. Everybody in this place that you need some kind of breakthrough in your life, I want you to say with me in a moment, God, I need a breakthrough. Are you ready? Here we go. God, I need a breakthrough. Let's, oh, one more time. God, I need a breakthrough. The second Sunday, the first Sunday was breakdown. The second Sunday was what? It was break up. 
break up with the sin in our lives. We can't expect to break through from God if we're messing around with sin all the time, okay? We need to be set free from that sin. So today, we're actually talking about, the title of the message is Journey to Breakthrough, Breakthrough. We're talking about breakthrough today, and you might think, well, it's got to be the end of the message, end of the series, because it, the series is called Journey to Breakthrough. But can I tell you, I am so excited about next week's message because the end is not today. The end is next week because only when we have our breakthrough can we then break out. God has something great for us. God wants to use us, but we've got to have our breakthrough, and may our breakthrough come today. So this week I ask you, are you ready for your breakthrough today? Are you ready for your breakthrough today? October 1st, 1947. Chuck Yeager became the first man in human history to break the sound barrier as he flew his Bell X-1 rocket plane to a speed of Mach 1 at an altitude of 45,000 feet. Became the first man ever in the history of humankind to do that. He broke through to a new level where no one else had gone before. Can I tell you something? God wants to help you to break through to a new level in your life where you have never gone before. He wants you to go further and higher and deeper and more to a place you've never been to, into a realm of living that will chart a new course for your life. To have that breakthrough be created in your life so that your momentum is forward and you're going to be heading in a positive direction. God wants to take you to a place you have never been before. Yeah. Ooh, it's a little scary to go where you've never been before, but it's exciting to go to a place you've never been before. God, can I tell you, God has more for you than where you are right now. Hallelujah. You know, we, we went to the Brownsville revival back in the day, and they didn't pray these big elaborate prayers over people. They just laid their hands on them and said, God, more! And may our prayer today be, God, I want more. I want more. I want to go to the next level. Let's define breakthrough as we begin. Breakthrough is a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development or achieving success in a particular sphere or activity. See, when you need a breakthrough, that's the implication there is that there are barriers in your way. There are things that are keeping you from moving forward. There are roadblocks. Maybe me, and I know this list is not exhaustive and there may be 20 other things in this place, but maybe it's your fear of failure that you need to break out of because you failed in the past and you don't think you can do anything. There's no confidence whatsoever. Maybe it's a relationship that's unstable or unhealthy that you really need to break through. Or if you only had that financial breakthrough, it would take you to the next level and you never have to worry about it again because God would take you to that next level. Maybe it's a breakthrough in your health. Breakthrough on a job. Maybe it's a breakthrough to the next level of serving God of where you want to be. Maybe it's a breakthrough with an addiction like, like being a shopaholic or overeating or drug use or lust. Or a breakthrough, break, breakthrough of hope in your life or a breakthrough of depression and fear in your life. But there are so many areas of our lives that are represented in this place today that cry out, you need a breakthrough. So I want you to think right now, God, what area, and, and pray as well, God, what area of my life do I need to see a breakthrough in? Let's, let's pray right now. Father, I pray for all of us, including myself, God. I believe you want to pinpoint, you want to show us. This is not a generic message today. God, there are certain areas of our life where you want to give us a breakthrough. And may we see that, may we fight for that, may we rest in you, Lord. May we just charge full speed ahead and say, God, I need a breakthrough in that area of my life. Hallelujah. What do you need that breakthrough for? Remember, it comes out of your intimacy, you spending time with God. Wow. So today, we're talking about David and how David needed a breakthrough. This is just like last week in that if you don't know much about the Bible, if you pay, it, pay attention for about the next five minutes, you're going to learn a lot about God's Word today, okay? So I want to give you a little history of David all the way back to when David was anointed king over Israel. Remember that day, if you know the word of God, I'm sure you remember it. Samuel was told by God, I'm fed up with Saul. He's out as king, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you anoint the next king of Israel, which would be the second king of Israel. And so God told Samuel go, to go to the house of Jesse, and I'm going to cause his boys to pass in front of you, and one of his sons is going to be the one. 
How do I know which one's going to be the one? Oh, you don't worry about that. I'll let you know. So Samuel goes to the house of Jesse, and Jesse causes his boys to pass in front of him. First one's Eliab, and Samuel thinks, oh, this has got to be a king. He looks like a king. He walks like a king. He talks like a king. God said, nope, that's not the one. Another one went by, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And Samuel's like, God, what are you telling me? It's none of these guys. And Samuel's like, Jesse, do you have another son by any chance? Oh, yeah, but he's out in the fields. Well, we're not sitting down to dinner until he gets here. And so in comes David. I don't know if he had time to take a shower or not. But he comes before Samuel. Ooh, the prophet's here. And here's David. He's been out watching sheep. He doesn't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, God speaks to Samuel and says he's the one. And Samuel, I don't know how he did it. i got to believe Samuel wasn't a bashful man. Samuel took out his horn of oil and begins pouring it upon David's head. It's, it's not like our little bit of oil up here, a little dab will do you, man. They used to pour it back in the day. So he's pouring oil on his head and he's declaring, David, you're the next king of Israel. Whoa, whoa. As a young teenager, he was anointed to be king over Israel. Now, he was not sitting on a throne yet. He was not the king yet, but God said, you're the next king. So then time goes on, and you come to David and Goliath. What a story that is, how little David uh, was bold enough to go to battle against Goliath and kill him. And David thought, well, maybe this is a step in the right direction because I've killed the giant now. But there was a problem. On the way back into town, there was a party going on, and all the ladies got to swooning at this party. And uh, the parade was going on, and they started shouting, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And all of a sudden, Saul became jealous of David. And for the next decade or more, David was on the run from King Saul, this one who he thought would wind up being his mentor. He was in fear for his life. Saul several times tried to pin him to the wall with a javelin. And, and David was out in the middle of the wilderness hiding in caves with a ragtag bunch of men. Wow, what a difficult time that was for him. Well, finally Saul died. David breathed a sigh of relief. Maybe this is the next step. Well, all of a sudden, David is made king, but he's only made king of one tribe, his own tribe of Judah. Okay? That's not all of Israel. He needs a breakthrough to become king of all of Israel. He's 36 years old when he sits on the throne in Hebron, but that's a far cry from being king of all of united Israel. The rest of the tribes had set up a guy by the name of Ishbosheth. That's hard to say. Say that fast three times. Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth was a king, was a son of Saul. There was a great loyalty to the former king, to, to King Saul, and so a lot of people followed this guy. And as a result, civil war ensued. It was a tough time for David, but eventually Ishbosheth was killed. And David once again thought, well, maybe this is my time. But no, it didn't happen. He did not become king of United Israel. So David had an idea. He said, I know what we'll do. We'll bring to the city the one thing that can unite all of Israel, and that is the Ark of the the covenant. The Philistines were cursed by the Ark of the Covenant. They left it beside the road, and David said, let's go get it. And, and this is the Ark of the Covenant that was a part of the furniture that was to be in the temple of God. The Ark of the Covenant that represented the presence of the living God. This was the Ark that the priests were carrying when they set foot on the flooded Jordan River, and a miracle happened, and the waters rolled back, and the Israelites crossed over on dry ground. This was the Ark of the Covenant that they're carrying around the city of Jericho when the walls fell down flat. So the people People of Israel loved the Ark of the Covenant. They knew it represented the presence of God. David says, come on, we're going to go to kirath Jerem and we're going to bring the Ark of the Covenant back. And what a party that was. They're playing their instruments. They're singing. They're celebrating. They're having a grand parade all along the way. Well, the Ark of the Covenant was on a cart that was being pulled by oxen. And, and, and it, they stumbled and, and the cart was about to tip over. And so there was a man by the name of Yuza who reached out to steady the Ark and touch the Ark. And as a result, Yuza dropped dead. That'll put a damper on a party. He dropped dead because, I believe, because he treated the holy as the sacred as something ordinary. And so they said, we're not bringing this thing back. We're going to leave it right here. They left it at the house of Odin, Edom, and came back. David still needed his breakthrough. God, you told me that I would be king. When am I going to be king of all of united Israel? Have you ever had one of those times when things are really, really bad? And then they got worse? So David's like, God, where's my breakthrough? When is it coming? When's my breakthrough coming? And then all of a sudden, the Philistines attacked. 
Oh, great, that's just what I need. I got, a, I got a feeling the Philistines were still holding a grudge over the whole David and Goliath thing, you know. So the Philistines are attacking. Now, let me give you a couple signs that you may need a breakthrough today. Number one is resistance. In chapter 14, verse 1, I encourage you to keep your Bible open here. There was a little something good that happened in David's life anyway. King Hiram of Tyre acknowledged that David is to be king over Israel, or is king over Israel. And as a result, he sent logs and stonemasons and carpenters to build David a palace. And that was nice of him. David was like, ooh, I get a palace, but oh, the Philistines are coming! Right away, resistance. The Philistines are coming. That, was, that had to be the worst sound that any Israelite could hear in the Old Testament. You know, today, our word that we don't like to hear is cancer. We don't like that word. But back then, it was Philistines. Oh no, the Philistines are coming. So there's resistance. Friend, I want to tell you, I want to look you in the eye and tell you, you have enemies that want you to fail. Come on. There are powerful forces of darkness at work that are pushing against you right now. And I know some of you sense that, and some of you understand that. There are obstacles that are looming large before you. I don't know what your resistance looks like. I don't even want to get into that today because we're all so different. But you feel a pushback in your life. This is not a time where you just kind of coast in and relax. And you feel, you feel a tension in your life. You feel the enemy trying to do something in your life. Wow, there's a pushback there. It's not smooth sailing in your life right now. You're sailing and you're trying to get over there, but the wind is pushing you backwards. That's where you are in life right now. Well, in this story, it says the Philistines went up in full force to search for David. But David heard about it and he went out to meet him. And here's, here's how I picture David's attitude that day. Okay, these Philistines are coming. I killed Goliath once. We can take care of this today. So instead of David hiding or running, he went out and said, you looking for me? Here I am. What are you going to do about it? Now you got to read between the lines to get that here, okay? I, I think that was a pretty bold move. David's like, okay, let's go at it. But then something happens that changes something inside of David. Reluctance sets in. So if you have resistance or reluctance, you may need a breakthrough today. The Philistines came out against him. David's like, you pushing me, I'm going to push back harder. He goes right out to meet them. But look at verse 9, if you have your Bibles open. Now the Philistines had come and raided the Valley of Rephaim. Valley of Rephaim was in Israelite territory. That was a pretty bold and cocky move on the part of the Philistines. And I believe it triggered a sense of fear in David, at least a little bit where David is now wondering, am I a fool? He's wondering, can we really beat these people? Can we win this thing? Fear came. He lost his nerve. There was some reluctance there. And can I tell you, the enemy tries to come against you and places fear and reluctance in your way to where you resign yourself to, well, I guess my life is always going to be like this. See, you can do that today. You can say, my life is always going to be this way, just so this is as good as it's going to get. Or you can believe God. Or the enemy will say, your breakthrough will never come. Or the enemy comes against you and says, I'm just too strong for you. You're never going to get your breakthrough. And I know that some of you have been in that battle. You've been struggling. You want that breakthrough, and you know what that breakthrough is. But there's been some, some fear, some reluctance coming to you, saying, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. I don't know if God can do this. I don't, know. I don't know if he wants to do this in my life. But don't allow that fear to get in there. If it's there, you need a breakthrough today. Now, I want to give you the turning point of this message right now in verse 10. In verse 10, so David goes out to meet him, but they come and they attack Rephaim. What's David's next move? What's his next move? He goes to God. He turns to God. He seeks the Lord. And he says, shall I go out and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? I want you to know at this point, David had no plan B. Okay, he didn't say, he didn't think, well, at, at least if we get in trouble with the Philistines, I know the Moabites, if I just place a phone call to the Moabites, they'll come over and help us wipe them up. He didn't, he didn't say, you know, we've got 10,000 archers just hiding in the woods so that when we come out and we act like we're getting beaten, and we start running, the archers will fill them full of arrows and we'll, we'll win this battle. He had no plan B whatsoever. All he had at this point was God. And he knew that all he had was God. So his only plan when he needed a breakthrough on this day was to go after God with everything that's within him. 
Listen, today, I don't have five steps to a breakthrough for you. It's not a formula that we can follow. If you're going to see your breakthrough, it's not because you're trying hard enough. It's not because you're grunting or because you're hoping. It's not because of your willpower, because that will not get it done. It won't happen. It will not just happen over the course of everyday life that sooner or later my breakthrough will come. If you're going to see your breakthrough today, you must go after God. You must lay yourself at his feet and say, God, I am yours and I need a breakthrough and you are my only hope in this God and there needs to be a supernatural element that begins to kick in yes you do your part but God says I'm going to do my part if you read that passage that I read you it says then David inquired of the Lord again are are you going to help us this time and God said don't do it like we did it last time this time you wait until you hear the sound in the top of the poplar trees like the marching of an army and then the victory will come that's the supernatural that begin to kick in. Friend, when you need a breakthrough, there will come a time, I'm telling you, I'm looking you in the eye and telling you this, there will come a time where it goes beyond your willpower, where it goes beyond your own human effort. And if you really trust God, there will come a time when the supernatural power of God kicks in and takes you over the top and gives you the victory and gives you the breakthrough and it will never be the same again, taking you to a new level in Jesus Christ. You cannot be denied. Yes, we've got to do our part. But my friend, if God doesn't do his part, it's not going to happen. Except the Lord build a house, they that labor, labor in vain. It's just not going to happen. So go after God. Now, I'm reading somebody's mind right now. Somebody's saying, I can't do that. Because I'm not worthy. I I want to tell you loud and clear today. You're not worthy. You're not worthy of a breakthrough. I'm not worthy of a breakthrough. You don't deserve a breakthrough. I don't deserve a breakthrough. But thank God, he doesn't work on the basis of our worthiness. Hallelujah. He works on the basis of something called grace and mercy and love. And whoever you are today, he wants to give you your breakthrough just because He loves you just because he loves you. You don't have to convince him of your breakthrough. You don't have to twist his arm. You don't have to talk him into it. He loves you. Can I tell you, he wants to give you your breakthrough even more than you want to receive your breakthrough. Wow. You don't deserve it. Let me let me give you the the litany of people. We could make this list four times as long. The woman at the well didn't deserve it, but she got her breakthrough. The crippled man who was let down through the ceiling by his four friends, he didn't deserve it, but he got his breakthrough. Some guy named Saul of Tarsus, hey, he got his breakthrough. Naaman got his breakthrough. Zacchaeus got his breakthrough. The woman whose blood wouldn't stop flowing, she got her breakthrough. And can I tell you, not a one of them deserved it. They did not deserve it, but God did it anyway. We don't deserve it, but God wants to do it anyway in our lives, my friend. Hallelujah. So David's going after God, and God responds. Hey, when you you go after God, he'll respond to you. He responded to David and said, thumbs up, verse 10. He said, go, I will deliver them into your hands. And so David and his men attacked the Philistines and defeated them. Hallelujah. Now, that's not the end of the story. There's so much, so much good in this passage here. I want to remind you that David never gave up. He was anointed to be king when he was a teenager. And now it is decades later. Decades later. What kept David going when he... How many times did David feel like giving up? I don't know. But I know he did. I, I go back to verse 2. If you, if you have your Bibles, look at verse 2. And David knew that God had established him as king over Israel and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people, Israel. And once again, that was born. That wasn't just because Samuel came to his daddy's house and poured the oil on his head and said, you're going to be king. That was born out of that deepened relationship that David had with the Lord on the hillside of Bethlehem when he was out watching his father's sheep. So that intimacy led him into that experience where God has promised me my breakthrough. Hallelujah. Now, that was all the way back when he was a young teenager. I wonder how many times 
David need to look back over his shoulder and be reminded of that. I wonder how many times, for example, when Saul was chasing him, when he faced Goliath, when Ishbosheth was made king, and later on when his own son Absalom tried to pull off a coup, how many times did David need to look back and remember that moment in time where Samuel uncorked that horn of oil and began to pour it on his head and said, you're going to be the next king of Israel. Can I tell you, I believe he had to look back on that many, many, many times. As a pastor, there are many times where discouragement will like to set into my heart. You know what I look back on? I look back on that moment in time where I know that God called me. God called me to be a pastor. God called me to be, do, be doing what I'm doing today. And that's what keeps me going sometimes. What kept David going was looking back in his life and saying, I know that I know that I I know that I know that I know that God has anointed me to be king of Israel. Hallelujah. And that came out of those intimate moments with God. That's why we need those intimate moments so we can allow God to speak to us. It's not all about us speaking to God. It's about allowing God to speak into our hearts too. So how many times did David have to go back into his mind to remember that moment in time? Friend, when God has spoken to you through that personal intimacy that you have with him, and when God gives you a promise of a breakthrough, you better hold on to that promise for all you are worth because the enemy will try to come over and over again and discourage you and say it will never happen, but you can declare to him, but my God has promised. My God has made me a promise, and I don't care what you say. By the grace of God, it's going to happen. Hold on to that promise. Rehearse that promise. Remind yourself of that promise. Some of you are in that phase right now where the enemy is trying to tear you apart spiritually, trying to discourage you so you just give up. Are you holding on to the promise of God? Are you hanging on to God said that I'm going to be healed or God said that he's going to do this? Hallelujah. Now I want to show you, this is my favorite verse in all of these, 1 Chronicles 14, 11. Verse 11. Look with me at verse 11. Then David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a breakthrough of water oh this is good this is rich i want you to notice who gave him the breakthrough god did but it also says by my hand so for your breakthrough you need to do your part but thank god god has a part if you don't do you do your part it probably won't get done but if i guarantee you if god doesn't do his part it won't get done so it's you and god working together and look at that. God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a breakthrough of water. Here's what I picture. I picture a dam. And in this case, I know that most of the times when dam breaks, dams break, it's not a good thing. But picture a dam breaking is a good thing. So it's holding back all these millions and millions and millions of gallons of water. And then there's a breach. There's a little stream of water coming out. And after a period of time, that little breach widens and opens up until there's a fountain pouring out of that thing, until the concrete weakens even more and it opens up. And finally, the whole rim of that dam bursts and the water comes pouring over that dam. And there is a mighty breakthrough taking place. Listen, I don't know how yours is going to work. Sometimes it may start off with a little stream of water. But I guarantee you, God wants to break it all the way through. Hallelujah. He wants to take you all the way to where, to where you need to be, my friend. And so, what a beautiful picture. God wants to break through that dam that is in your way and cause the water to break through. Hallelujah. Praise God. David, at long last, got his breakthrough. Look at verse 17, the last verse that we read today. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations to fear him. Now, it's very difficult to ascertain in God's word exactly the moment in time where David ascended to all 12 tribes of Israel as king. That's a very, very difficult thing for us to figure out with David, not so much with some other kings. But I believe it was primarily right here. This is a time that David was established. This is a time that his fame spread and the fear of him spread. And his kingdom is established over all of Israel. David got his promise when he was a teenager, teenager, but his breakthrough came at this moment in time. Now get this. This is good. Hang on to this. Did you know that there is a place, a literal geographical place in Israel that is called the Lord of the Breakthrough? Guess where that is? In this passage that we're reading today, David named the place. He named it Baal Perizim. And Baal Perizim means 
the Lord of the breakthrough. He's the Lord of the breakthrough. Can you imagine subsequent generations are walking along? A little boy looks up in his daddy's eyes and says, Daddy, why is this place we're in? Why is this called the Lord of the breakthrough? And his dad says, oh, son, I'm glad you asked this question. I got to tell you the story of what happened right on this very ground we are standing on. And they were reminded maybe dozens of years, if not hundreds of years later, that our God is the God of the breakthrough. Now, I, I, wanna, I want you to understand this is a very important principle today. What we're talking about today is important for today. But what we're talking about today is important way beyond today. I believe that today God is going to give people some breakthroughs today. But this isn't the only breakthrough you're going to need in your life, is it? It's not a one-time deal. There are going to be other times in your life where you need a breakthrough, my friend. And let this day, let this day, you're going to remember June 2nd, 2019. This is going to be your marker. It's going to be your milestone. It's going to be your memorial where you know that you know that you know that God gave me a breakthrough on that day. And that's going to remind you in the years to come when you need other breakthroughs. Wait a minute. God did it back there on June 2nd, 2019. And if God gave me a breakthrough then, he can give me a breakthrough today and I'm trusting him for a brand new breakthrough today you need to allow today to become that memorial stone that says this is what I'm going to look back on David looked back on that anointing by Samuel we need to look back on this day saying this is the day God broke through for me hallelujah and I, I close with this thought today I love verse 12 there's so many good verses in this passage I love verse 12 this is almost like a sidebar an antidote an anecdote but it says the Philistines in their hasty retreat had abandoned their gods. I like that. Their gods abandoned them, so they abandoned their gods. And so, so the, the Israelites are out there and went, so what is that? Oh, there are a bunch of little gods laying around on the ground, made out of wood. Oh, look at these little gods. And so David gave the order, hey, everybody, gather them up, and we're going to burn them. They abandoned their gods because their God abandoned them. And it reminds me today, and I hope it reminds you today, there is only one Lord of the breakthrough, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship team, come, please. I'm going to ask us all to stand right now. Can we all stand all across this place?